Hey, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. We're back on site, back into the normal working day routine for me. Hope you all had a good day. Wednesday, hump day if you started Monday, beginning of the working fortnight for me. And yeah, if you're over on the podcast or Facebook, thanks for popping in. I hope you also had a fantastic day. Great to have you all here and listening. Now, a little bit more excitement today. We've got some good stuff. We've got some PS5 news, some Canon stuff, some Pentax stuff, which is quite actually funny, I thought. Uh, baseball news, it's all over. We'll talk about that soon. And some other stuff from Insta360 we need to discuss. So today you wouldn't have seen a photo up on the Instagram. It's because I only got a few photos that were worthy of enough, I thought, uh, from Point Perrin. And my next photos, I haven't started getting out. So I sort of, I'm a little bit, I've got a few days spare. Normally, I like to have about 10 good photos that I can stretch over the time period between videos. This is unfortunately one of those ones where I had like four or five good photos and then the other because it was a short video. So I don't have too many up there. I might uh, put a couple others up in there, but I'd rather just sort of keep it flowing, the, the process I sort of got it, where I do the photos to match the video each week. So you should see them up starting again this week, Wednesday, or this, sorry, this Friday or Saturday. Should be good. So yeah, I thought I'd just ex quickly explain that one if you haven't seen any Insta photos up today. Normally pretty consistent, just for some reason, I don't have anything there or even any fillers because I normally have some stuff on the cameras and bits. But uh, yeah, all good couple of days off Insta, it's never a bad thing. Less revenue for Facebook. <laughs> Rightio, the PS5 PlayStation, basically unboxing happened today. I guess that's all you can do. It's a tricky one because now what we're, what we're finding with on YouTube, we used to get the, the big creators would get the unboxing, you get the unboxing experience and they'd plug it in and you can sort of get a first glimpse at how it all works. So now what companies are doing, they're doing, they're letting the guy, they're giving to the guys early. So the PlayStation is not due out to early November. I think November the 5th. Uh, we're in October 28th. So you've got about three days, about another week, a bit over a week before the actual release. So what they do now is they do, they'll give it to them to unbox, but they can't show, show them playing it or using it or taking photos with it. It seems to be uh, that's sort of changed this year in 2020. Like they're happy to get the early sort of it's like a double hit for the um, double hit for the advertising, I guess, for the companies. I, I think that's the way they see it. So they go, well, we'll give it to you, but what we want you to do, we want you to unbox it here, and then six days later, then you can give us a review on how it all works. So we get double, we get a week of the unboxing coverage. And then that rolls into, okay, now that you're sort of sick and tired of hearing about and seeing the unboxing, now here is what it actually can do. And it seems like, I think, I reckon pretty much 2020s, it's sort of been that way this year, probably at least since mid-year. That seems to be the sort of flow of how, the, how they're making it work on YouTube now. So plenty of unboxings, no actual is it any good as yet that we had that big leak one out from asia i think late last week um that come out but as that we have no sort of gameplay from the states or australia or anything like that so that's probably next week i'd say or, or probably a day before or around the same time as it actually goes live and released so pretty interesting um i've watched mkbh he's pretty actually as a as someone to watch tech wise, there's a couple of people I really like to watch, and on the gadgets and, and stuff like that. Uh, more computer stuff is Linus, but I'll normally go MKBH or um, uh, who's the other one? I've forgotten. <laughs> Unbox Therapy, sorry, how could I forget them guys? Uh, they do a really good unbox and go through the details and stuff. NKBH was pretty good. Uh, unbox come after him, so I'd already watched this, so I got most of my details from that. Now, the first thing I do want to mention is on the box, it had 825 gigabytes. I'm assuming that's the storage. I went on the PlayStation site to see if there's options because the PS4 Pro, uh, which I'm currently trying to sell on eBay, if you are looking for one, let me know. Um, is a one ter they've 
one terabyte. Games now are even bigger and bigger. We're talking about 4K and 8K streaming. Uh, why are we going backwards in the storage? I would have assumed it would have started at one terabyte and gone up to two terabytes. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure what the thing, 825 is a strange sort of a number too. Uh, most hard, or even SSDs, they either go like 250, 500 at, at one terabyte. Where's 825? I mean, yeah, it's just a little bit weird in that regards. So, interesting. We'll, I guess we'll see once they play it, we'll get all the specs roll out once they do that second release. Um, and then we'll get some more idea why they've gone that way and what, what that sort of entails. Um, now, you need a mount for it. That was the first thing that uh, MKBH was saying. So if you lay it flat like the old PlayStations used to be, so like the PlayStation 2, it, was like, it looked good standing up, but it also pretty much good looked like a little uh, DVD player or a, a VHS recorder. Lay down flat, slot it in your TV unit. It was perfect because they all have those little skinny slots for the old DVD players or um, basically they were all there from VHS and beta tapes. They still make them for some reason. Um, so that way it was even and square. PS2, PS4 was a square boxy, so you could slide it in there. If you wanted, you could stand it up. Um, so you had that option. This one, you can't just stand it up. It'll wobble. It's not square on the bottom. So you've got to have this mount that clips on and then sit it onto there, which is aesthetic. I, I can understand they really pushed hard on their aesthetics sort of program with this. But to have to add a bit of plastic onto it, uh, yeah, sure, the clips come out at the back and you can't really see it. It sort of looks like it's floating. Uh, but it's, yeah, just a little bit weird, I thought, in that regard. So that was an interesting step from Sony. Um, I think they really want everyone to stand it up and to put it out there. Uh, I know in my household, I wouldn't be allowed to do that. So <laughs> it'd have to be hidden away somewhere. So yeah, a little bit, little bit weird in that regard. Uh, it's a big unit. He mentioned a fair bit about how big it is, how heavy it is compared to the other PS4 Pro there. He's one terabyte one, and it's m m at least that much taller. And he said it's got a heap more heft to it. So definitely a bigger build. I'm assuming that's all to do with heat sinks and cooling to make sure that they can do all their promised stuff without any issues, aka, say, like an R5 where it just can't handle the, the power that's getting put through it. Um, now the other interesting thing, the white plastic on the inside, so where you have your two side walls come through and on the inside near the, the black shiny gloss finish, that's all imprinted with the button logos and the same is on the joystick as well, on the bottom side of the joystick in the plastic, really tiny, uh, has like the cross, the X, the circle, the triangle and I thought, and he, I'm pretty sure MKVH as well, he, he was pretty impressed with that and I actually think that was probably one of the better things of it, that's really, really really cool it like to have that put into the mold and then for it to be the mold have to be that fine detailed to get that finer print because it's really really tiny uh that would have cost a fortune to get that mold perfect to uh i've <laughs> had a little bit of experience in molds and it's not that much fun to try and get them designed all the cost of them so to get that done and make that just for aesthetics again amazing by sony very very cool little feature i if you if you've done try to design and make a plastic mold, you, I think you'll quickly understand how that would have cost a fair bit and been a major little hurdle for them to get it right. Uh, they could have easily done the way of it and made it such a more simpler mold, but uh, very, very cool, I think, from Sony. Um, it's got usual stuff. It's got uh, HDMI, Ethernet, or Ethernet, uh, two USBs, a Kensington lock, a front, and on the front it's got a US, one USB-A, and one USB-C, there's two USBs in the back. It does have an eject button if you've got the disk drive version, so it all depends on what you're having. Um, I probably wouldn't go to that because I just don't use them. I think I've still had the one, my PlayStation 4, I think I hadn't even opened two or three of the games that I'd bought for it, and uh, they were still sitting in the wrappers. So just, just don't use them because everything's updated, so you get updated by the internet anyway, so it's just, yeah, it's just not worth it. So I, I really don't see the need. Obviously, there's people that want to do it and they're just going to play their games, but you'll think you'll find most of the games anyway. You've got to get some sort of update downloaded anyway, even if you have the disc, just to sort of stay connected. So a little interesting on that one. Um, joystick, 
uh, looks pretty good, a little bit bigger. USB-C, they've changed the light area, they've changed the way the charge port, you've got a USB-C at the front, and then there's a proprietary little uh, ports, of, not ports at the back, but like little, mag not magnetic, uh, just little uh, PowerPoint chargers, and that's purely for their uh, accessory dual charger. Um, yeah, I guess it all depending on how it goes. Putting on the PS4 Pro, I've got a I've got a fan cooling one where the PS4 sits in and blows cool air straight through it, and it also dual charges the two joysticks uh, and cools everything down all in one USB. So that was a good thing. So I'd say there's going to be a, probably a lot of better third party uh, chargers and cradles to suit the whole system. I think so. They'll be coming pretty quick. I don't think they'll be far behind. Uh, headphones, he said he had, a, he had a look at them. Look, they look good quality headphones. I've never really gamed with headphones. I guess if you're in a, if you're gaming in, in your room and you don't want to make noise, you're doing it all night, so well, that's fair enough. Uh, yeah, it, it all depends on personal preference. If you're going to go and buy just especially Sony headphones for it, well, that's, I guess, personal preference. They look pretty good. He uh, Obviously, he still can't test them. So at the moment, they just look good. Big, puffy cups. They're nice and comfy. Do the job. And a 1080 HD camera, which I guess for some certain games, you're probably going to want to use it. And I guess maybe for photos and stuff to put your avatar into the games. That's probably one of the reasons for it. Not sure. Again, don't know how good it is. Don't know costs on that as yet. So that's pretty interesting. So yeah, overall, it looks pretty, it looks look it's a fantastic looking bit of kit. Uh, I guess if you're either a Sony or a Xbox player, and that's pretty much your two choices. It's one or the other. You don't really have, you never change. As far as I know, I'd never go to Xbox. I've always played PlayStation, so I'll probably be stuck with that. Um, I don't see myself buying it. Uh, I just purely that myself anymore with the channel. Just don't have time to play anyway. So, but it looks good, and I think it's it'll do really well. Sony's always made a good unit, so it'll be good to see once we get those reviews out. I think it's going to actually be pretty tip top. Now over in Canon Rumors, we've got a big one, uh, a CR3, so it's pretty much confirmed. Uh, I've got a brand new APS-C RF mounted camera, apparently going to be released second half of 2021. Now we've talked a lot on the channel about the M50, how the M52 was just a terrible, terrible update. Uh, well, that all it was, an update. It wasn't even a new camera, and they're selling it as a new camera. Um, what about the Pro APS-C we we're going to get? I think that's pretty much dead and dusted. I'm pretty sure this is what they're talking about. This is going to be the one. And as I said to the boys in, on Canon Rumors, my question was between the $600 US M50, yeah, that's 50, that gives you your lens, and the RP's dropped down in price. As I said yesterday, there's, big, there's a big discount now. RP's now $999 US. That's only $300 difference. Um, Sorry, four hundred dollars difference, uh, and but that's with a lens, the twenty-five to one hundred four at Adorama at the moment. So that, that's a fantastic deal, four hundred dollars leeway, and you've got to worry about are you going to keep the M six Mark II? Is there going to be an, another M six three? That's in, that's above the thousand dollar mark already. So that's you're not going to buy that if you can, when you can buy the RP. Uh, is there enough room in that four hundred dollar margin to fit this? RF mount APS-C, would you even worry about it? Because I would, or my theory was, wouldn't you just take that RP, firmware update it so you get all the same gear as the R, the base R. You can up-spec the R a little bit. Uh, just keep the same sensor, that 26, don't have the 30, but just give it a few other specs so you can use the intervalometer and stuff like that in the Series 2. Bring that out, keep it at 999, then have your M50 as your only APS-C camera. That's the total entry point. Once you want to get serious and go to full frame, then you, you've only got a three to $400 jump up into full frame with a base unit RP. I think that's a better solution. If they're going to have four or five cameras around the same price, you're either going to go the base one or you're going to go the base full, full frame. Why would you worry about paying $900 for a APS-C one, when you have 100 bucks, you can get a full frame. It, it's, it's a little bit muddled, that area. I, I think they're trying to do too much Canon. Maybe simplify it a little bit. Um, get less, but put more into them. I think they'll sell a bit more. So that was pretty interesting. Um, there's no 
And the other interesting things was uh, they reckon it's going to pack a punch. It's going to be the smallest EOS R camera. Obviously, being APC, it should be. Um, they reckon it's going to pack a punch for sports and video. Now, video, it's going to be, if it's APC like the M50, nighttime, it's, it struggles with video. If, unless they can somehow take that smaller sensor and work out how to get the noise out of it on night times. I don't see how that's going to be good for video. Uh, like the Sony can go up to 400,000 and it's still pretty much crystal clear. I get to about 3,200 and it's noisy as hell on the M50. So I can't see that happening with the APS-C as a video. And then sports, I can't imagine some pro person out there smashing out photos at the local gridiron game or whatever on an M50. I'm pretty sure they're gonna have a 1DX3 or a R5 or something professional to do sports. And with the power shot, that little power shot come out, that was meant for the mums and dads for sports. They're gonna just get that and not buy an M50. Not gonna be changing lenses and taking a whole bag full of gear to a soccer match or a cricket game or AFL game just so they can get a couple of photos and sit there swapping tele photos to, <laughs> to wide angle ones. So, I'm pretty sure that it's that's not the right market it should be going for the M50. The M50 is like an entry level photographer slash video vlogger, sort of that sort of range. I think that's really where they need to add for that. Um, now they're saying they're not gonna make any RFS lenses. So they're not gonna be any specific APS-C lenses. So they're bringing out an APS-C camera with RF mount, but there's gonna be no specific lenses. So you still have to buy the RF mount lenses. So you still either go into the Lot, decent amount of money to crazy freaking insane money sell your liver and your kidneys sort of money just to get a lens so that could be tricky for them they really need that at that entry level range like um you're gonna have to do it somehow or they're gonna have to definitely open that rf mount up to sigma and tamron to give people a chance otherwise it's going to be a lot of ef to er adapters being sold and EF lenses will become big in the market because they're going to have to suck them up to use them because you know the L lenses are worth more than the freaking camera, so it's it's going to be insane trying to do that. It'll take a while just to buy one or two once it becomes secondhand, I think. So pretty interesting. Uh, it will have a new new sensor and dual pixel autofocus. Other than that, no other specs. So uh, don't know about this one. It's, it's, as much as it sounds like it's pretty much locked in, Canon Rumors is pretty normally pretty spot the dog. Uh, I just don't know how this is going to go. I, I don't see the, I don't know where it's going to fit. I guess that's it. That's maybe it's just me. I'm just a dumb guy, but um, yeah, it just seems a little bit interesting that that four hundred dollar barrier isn't much to play with when you're selling stuff. So now, <laughs> something funny to laugh. Uh, Pentax uh, bring out a K K three uh, Mark three February twenty twenty one. No prices yet. An APS-C SLR, DSLR. <laughs> uh, now, the vi there's a video on it. You can go on YouTube, the Pentax, and watch it. And they talk, uh, and it, I was just about in tears. Um, they're trying to resell DSLRs as the ultimate in photography and having a pentaprism so you can see see what you're looking at through, the, through your eye, optical eye finder. And that's the pure form of photography. And that's what everyone needs. We're going to keep it pure. And everyone should be coming to this because don't worry about digital. Don't worry about anything else. And I was just, I'm like, they are really struggling. Uh, this is uh, obviously, they're bringing out a camera that's basically got old technology, DSLRs. They're, they're just hanging on. This is what happened when we went from... When I used to, when I started my photography in film with a Pentax K1000, which was a fantastic camera, DSLRs came on, and all the film world went, "Oh my God, no, not DSLRs!" And then 20 years later, that's like DSLRs, and they're copying the same fate. And some reason, Pentax is trying to hang on. Uh, just insane. I just can't. There's going to be a small group, but that small group is not going to buy enough cameras because they're going to look after and maintain them and care for them because they're the, those Pentax. Fans and I am too. I love my. I loved Pentax. No problems at all with. Them. I think they're a great camera, but they you, you're crazy going. Like I've come from film straight into mirrorless. I tried going back to DSLR and I had to. I sold the camera because it's just why would you? I just like mirrorless is just so much better. You've got so many options. It's so easy to work with. 
Uh, and it's got nothing to do with the camera or, or what it's made out of or what it does. It's what you're taking a photo of. As long as you get that shot, who cares what it is? And if that's the easiest and quickest way to get it done, then you've got more chance of catching the best shot. And that's more important than being in the spirit of photography. <laughs> and that's what the whole video is just about the spirit and oh, the bliss and joy of being able to see. It was, it was so funny. I was, yeah, it was pretty hilarious. Uh, yeah, they're on a sinking ship over there. That uh, I can't see that what keeping them afloat. Very, very weird. Um, Insta 360 while we're on cameras, lucky last new release tomorrow. Uh, well, it's, it's October 28th, so it's about five or six hours for the states from now. Obviously, I'll so it'll be tomorrow's show. I'll be able to give you an update on what that is. Pretty excited about what it looks like. It does have some function, uh, funky sort of abilities. That will be pretty interesting. So look forward to that one tomorrow night. Last but not least, uh, congratulations to the Dodgers. Uh, LA Dodgers won the World Series today. Shortened season. I, look, I've got to be honest, I'm a Cardinals fan for life. Uh, I actually wasn't really impressed about them even worrying about a season this year. It, it was like a 50-game season. So it's only like a third of an actual season. Does it count? Does it matter? Look, those guys are busting their ass. No matter what, they've had to train even on them by themselves, all through COVID. Uh, look, they deserve it. Shortened season, longer season. They've put the results on the board. Dodgers, first World Series win since 88 when Kirk Gibson got him across the line with Tommy Lasorda. Me and my brother used to watch that 88 World Series uh, video just over and over. It was just an amazing series. So good on them. They've had a couple of tough losses over the last couple of years. So congrats to them. Uh, condolences to Tampa Bay. Great effort to get there. They were just an awesome team too. Uh, you wouldn't have never expected them at the start of the year. You would have got great money on odds for them. So uh, awesome to both teams. Great job through really painful and tough trying conditions. Uh, these guys are used to big crowds and getting that atmosphere and there's five people and cardboard cutouts. So it would have been a totally different experience. Uh, it's hard to imagine as a player sort of going to that and going from 60,000 people screaming at you to a tape recording of someone cheering in the background. It would have been, it would have been really weird, I think, to play, uh, but they adapted and they did a great job. There was some just amazing, amazing efforts. So very, very cool to the Dodgers. Congrats. And that's about it. Another day. What a day. Uh, yeah, that's the end of the baseball for the year. So hopefully we can get back to a normal full season next year and the cards can get back on top. Uh, gr I have to do say, Nationals, National League, thank God for that. Go to the National League. No cheaters here. We don't need that American League DH. <laughs> I'm going to get some haters over that. Um, I will see you all tomorrow. Stay safe. And thanks for stopping by. Whether you're going that way, that way, I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace.